and welcome back to my channel and I'm super excited to see you. Today is Foundation Friday and this is a requested one by you. It is a clean brand which Sephora uh, deems it as clean and you guys have requested this so many times and it might be a really beautiful foundation for winter. So before we get going, hit that subscribe button and share this with somebody that you think might like it and let's do it. All right, so I am pre-filming quite a few videos today, so this foundation is going to get a workout. What foundation are we talking about? It is the Josie Moran Vibrancy Foundation. I am in color uh, RG20, which means it's neutral, which means it has a little bit of red and a little bit of gold in this foundation. So let me tell you a little bit about this. It's $45. They have a pretty good selection of colors. Um, pretty good. It's not, you know, the worst I've seen. It's not the best. Uh, basically what this is though, they call it a skincare foundation. So it's a medium to full coverage skincare foundation. It's supposed to hydrate. It has the power of 100% argon oil, which you know is her claim to fame. So it says that vibrancy utilizes a revolutionary cold pressed process that preserves the power hand selected ingredients for the freshest, most effective skincare foundation. All right. Um, this is a breathable, lightweight coverage. It helps to soothe and smooth and restore skin's luminosity. This is a very hydrating foundation. This is not something that my oilier girls, I feel, are going to gravitate towards because it is so hydrated and it is backed by that, um, you know, 100% argon oil, which again is going to be very hydrating to the skin is dimethicone based so just so you know it is dimethicone based but it is clean at sephora which means it has no sulfates no sls no sles parabens formaldehyde formaldehyde releasing agents phthalates mineral oil um coal tar i mean a lot of other ingredients so i think that that's great so they took out kind of the bigger ones which is fantastic so let's get on with this uh this foundation does not say that it is a long wearing foundation uh but it definitely has a more of a fuller coverage to it i have played with this a couple of times and i'm really excited to show you how this looks i have skincare on again i will put the skincare below what i have on i did not use my heavy your moisturizer, my Biosense moisturizer. I did use my Be Hydra from Drug Elephant. I am normal to dry, and this foundation is hydrating enough that I did not need a heavier uh, moisturizer. I also used a spray SPF. Again, this all will be below, but I this foundation is so hydrating. I wanted to be very careful how I layered, uh, you know, skincare on before this. All right, so let's get going. I did notice, though, the one thing to note is that the best way to apply this is with your hands. Now, if you are dehydrated, I mean severely dehydrated, flaky, etc., you can go ahead and use a beauty sponge. But for everyone else and for, I would say, the general public, you really should use your hands because you do not want to add any more... Uh, hydration in from the beauty sponge all right because we you know when we add the hydration in from the beauty sponge it definitely becomes even more luminous and this foundation just doesn't need it it's very very skin like this foundation but you can see already look how shiny and hydrate oh excuse me <coughs> hydrating and shimmery not shimmery but glowy I would say and I do not have a primer on um, right now for you guys. I have tried this with a primer before and I didn't really notice a big difference in, you know, texture of the skin or pore size. I did try it with my Milk Blur Stick and it went on beautifully over that, but it, I did definitely use a beauty blender on those areas. The one thing that I will tell you is that if you have any kind of um, flakiness or texture, so I'm in the middle of a little bit of my dry season is coming in with my skin and the air is super dry, I've been running our heat. So my forehead has been kind of a little bit flaky. So what I like to do is take a uh, beauty blender that is not damp and I will just press this foundation right over those areas that I might have a little bit more texture or I've noticed that my skin is kind of angry at me. So yeah, my forehead has not been my uh, area of love recently. 
Yeah, my forehead is peeling a little bit also too from my Retin-A. This happens a lot in the winter. I do scale back a little bit in the Retin-A area on the winter because like I only go two times a week because my skin is already so dry because of the heat, the heater running. Um, I find my skin does have a tendency to uh, show flakiness when I wear a more full coverage foundation, okay? So this you see right here on my forehead, um, in my opinion, is not from the foundation. Um, it is definitely from what my skin is going through at the moment because look how pretty the foundation looks all over the rest of the skin. It's also happening on my chin a little bit. Um, my skin is just not super uh, happy right now with me. <laughs> it happens to the best of us, you guys. Skin's not always perfect. Uh, for me, I will have to set this foundation. Uh, but I set it with a more mattifying primer or mat mattifying powder because I do not need to add any more luminosity to the rest of this makeup application. So I will set this with a gentle amount of maybe the Mineral Veil powder from Hourglass or the Charlotte Tilbury or the Milk powder. So that's basically that. It goes on really quickly. It definitely is a more, I would say, more medium finish. I wouldn't say this is like a full. I mean, you can layer this on, but it, then it starts to kind of look mask-like. Um, so we just want to keep that in mind. It's not looking amazing around my mouth. I just, that's, this is kind of what I had over, I've tried this over the past several days, and this is just what's been happening with my skin. Um, it has been happening with a few other foundations as well, uh, but it hasn't been happening with my CC cream, so I'm feeling more of that kind of lighter weight coverage, but uh, again, I just don't know if this is the foundation, if this is what's happening to my skin, but it definitely is grabbing onto it, so it's something to note. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go finish the rest of my makeup, and I'll be right back and show you how it looks, and then we'll go into natural light. All right, so everything is on. By the way, this is the sultry palette on my eyes from um, Anastasia. Uh, so I lied. I ended up using my hourglass powder in ethereal light because I don't know, this area right here is really bothering me, and this area right here is really bothering me. Um, I am going to see how it goes throughout the day, but the rest of the skin looks very pretty, so I'll get up real close so you can see. Um, I think the foundation is really pretty. It's really nice. It's definitely more of a medium finish. Um, the only thing that bothers me is anybody that might be having any kind of flare-ups like me where there is dry skin or something to that nature. It definitely does not conceal it. Um, I also maybe might have made a mistake by not putting on a more rich moisturizer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into natural light and I'm going to show you what this looks like because that's the true test. And then sometimes when this happens to me, what I'll do is I will take a little bit of the foundation, a little bit of uh, an oil, like a facial oil, and then I will tap it into the skin with a damp or dry beauty blender. So I will do that. So let's go into some natural light. All right, so here we are in natural light. I think it looks a lot better in natural light, obviously, because it is a little bit more blown out as well. Um, but I will zoom you in here so you can see what I'm talking about. So do you see how this is starting to kind of, it just grabs onto my, sorry, I just, my door is open. It's like literally in the morning time right now, so it's a lot of traffic. But see how it's kind of grabbing and pulling onto those places? But the rest of the skin looks really nice. You know, this happens sometimes also with more full coverage foundations, I'll be very honest. That's why I have a tendency not to wear more full coverage foundations. So yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go try that trick with a little bit of oil, tap it in, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So nothing is helping. It's absolutely my skin. It's just flaking at the moment. It is really having an issue. Um, so this probably wasn't the best week to wear a foundation Friday, but you know what? You guys always say like every foundation looks good on you. I don't always have a good skin day, but the rest of the skin looks great. I'm a little worried about the areas that have texture. So I'll be back in a little bit to show you how it wears. 
All right, so we are back. This is about four hours later. Um, it's looking really pretty on the skin. I'll let you see. Uh, the texture has not gotten any better here or here. It's pretty dewy. Um, I do notice that it comes off on your hands pretty easily, so it's not transfer resistant, even though I did set it. So that's kind of a bummer to me. I didn't really notice that the first time. I didn't really, or the first couple of times, I should say. I didn't really wear it for that long. Um, but I think it still makes the face look really pretty um yeah so these areas still are bothering me a little bit but the rest of the skin looks really nice we'll give it a few more hours and we'll see what we think but it definitely is a little bit um it definitely transfers on to your hands so as it stands right now I feel like a this uh, would definitely need a primer something one that can like stick to it so the foundation stays on a little bit better and then really honestly this is for your more dry to dehydrated skin types definitely not for normal to oily uh, just in my opinion as it stands right now but everything looks pretty good it's wearing really well on the nose so we'll check in in a little bit Hi loves, I'm back. Okay, so it is another three hours later, and this is what the foundation is looking like. It's very, very glowy. Um, the texture down here and on my forehead is actually looking a little bit better. It's staying on pretty well. So this is what my overall thought is. I kind of have like this back and forth thought process with this foundation. A, it's a very hydrating, glowy, dewy foundation. So it's definitely gonna be something for somebody that has dry and dehydrated skin. So having said that, I'm afraid if you do have any kind of uh, peeling from in your Retin-A or glycolics or anything like that, it will grab onto that because that is what's happened here. Now, I think this is something that I would get a sample of. I would go to Sephora, get a sample of it, and try it out for yourself because I don't want you to count this one out. It just, I don't know if I'll be reaching for it again. Um, maybe I will because maybe I'll try this as my skin continues to get drier in the winter months and see what happens with it because right now I'm not super loving it but it looks really nice on camera I don't know I'm just kind of I'm kind of like in the middle on this foundation so let me know if you have tried this if you love it if you love it what skin type are you do you use it with a primer do you apply it with a beauty blender do you apply it with a brush your hands I would love to know some of your tips and tricks because I love to hear from you all so I hope you have an amazing amazing weekend I hope you had a th fantastic Thanksgiving, and I will see you on Sunday. Lots of love from me to you. Bye, guys.